Green Spot, Single Pot, Irish Steel Whiskey, and Chateau Louisville Barton from Bordeaux. My two great loves have come together to create this fantastic whiskey. Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm going to do a review of the Green Spot Single Pot Irish Still Whiskey finished in a Bordeaux red wine cast from Chateau Louisville Barton. Now, I've been to this estate. It's from the Louisville property, which has been broken down into three different uh, chateaux Louisville Le Casas, Louisville Pofier, and Louisville Barton. Um, but Barton, uh, the wines are actually made at Louisville um, Langoa Barton, it's just a distillery. So, before I get into this uh, whiskey, here are my notes about uh, this chateau and this whiskey. Chateau Lioville Barton is located in the Saint Julien Appellation of the Bordeaux region of France. The wine produced here was classified as one of the 15 second growths in the original Bordeaux wine official classification of 1855. Lioville Barton, along with Chateau Lioville La Casas, and Chateau Louisville Porfier was once part of the vast Leoville estate. The estate was purchased by Hugh Barton in 1826 and continues to be owned by the Barton family of Irish descent. The current owner, Anthony Barton, began running the estate in 1983 along with his sister property, Chateau Langoa Barton. The estate's 50 hectares of vineyards are planted to 72% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Merlot and 8% Cabernet Franc. In June 2015, the Chateau partnered with Irish distillers Middleton Distillery and Dublin-based wine and whiskey merchants Mitchell and Son to create a Bordeaux wine finished expression of the iconic Green Spot Single Pot Irish Whiskey. Green Spot Chateau Louisville Barton Irish Whiskey was aged in 75% ex bourbon cast and 25% Oloroso Sherry cast for seven to ten years. It was then aged in French Oak Chateau Louisville Barton Bordeaux wine cast for an additional 12 to 24 months of aging. It is non-chill filtered, has natural color, it is bottled at 46% alcohol by volume and I paid $98 here in the United States. This is an absolutely superb whiskey. It's one which if you have in your collection you're probably going to want to hide it somewhere because if you come home and you're looking at your whiskeys and like, hmm, what do I want to have today? As soon as your eyes are set on this bottle, you're going to want to grab it, right? So you're going to kind of need to control yourself to keep yourself from going to all the time because it's going to disappear really, really quick. An absolutely superb whiskey. It's one of both, I would say, um, some power and some elegance. It's very labor layered and really complex. So on the front part, I get your sort of your classic, I would say, Irish apple notes, green and uh, red apple notes. But then immediately the uh, Bordeaux cast comes into play. And I get these real nice red, dark red fruit notes, uh, probably like black currants um, and cassis. And then chocolate notes come in that remind me actually of some um, peated uh, I, uh, Scotch whiskey, single malt from, um, from Isla. Uh, that I'm done in red wine cast. Although, of course, it doesn't have the smoky, briny characteristics, but it has a similar chocolate note that I find common in peated Scotch whiskeys. It has a real nice spice character as well, loads of vanilla. I'd say the chocolate is more of like a milk chocolate. So it has a real nice development of the apples, green and red. There's some honey notes in there as well. Perhaps even a little bit of citrus, and then those dark black and red fruit notes come out on the back end, and that chocolate. And the more you smell, the more it's, the more nuanced it comes across on the nose. All right, on the palate. Absolutely superb. This is a whiskey that I would describe as also being thought, prov provocative, one that makes you sort of stop and really think and really pay attention to it. It just kind of goes layer upon layer upon layer and subtlety upon subtlety upon subtlety. Um, again, on the, on the palate that I got on the nose, there is uh, the green and red black, uh, it's green and red apple notes 
I get some honey, loads of vanilla. Then I get those darker black fruit notes, black currants and cassis. And then there's sort of a, a chocolate covered cherry note on the back end and a lot of vanilla. There's also a real nice spice note there as well. Um, I'll say some cinnamon, some baking spices, and a little bit of, I would say like a barbecue spice rub. This, words really fail to do this whiskey justice. It, but it is, it is just an absolutely superb whiskey. And I'm sort of stretching and trying to think of better ways to describe this whiskey. Uh, and and it's, it's a challenge because it is absolutely a superb. Um, I think right now, it in terms of quality price ratio, because I, I got it for under $100. Of course, tax takes it over $100. I think it's punching above its weight. I think you're, it's a, a high, even though that sounds like a lot of money, and it is, it's, there are other whiskeys, I think, I'm thinking of some Scotch whiskeys that are of this quality that you're going to spend $130 up. So I think it's still, and if you can find a bottle, a real high quality price ratio whiskey. Not an inexpensive, maybe not even an everyday drinker, but still high quality price uh, uh, ratio of whiskey. Absolutely superb. Now, what am I going to give it in terms of a score? I'm going to go... Uh, I'm gonna go like 95 points, 95 points. I am really, 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 really impressed with this whiskey. Now, that being said, it's not a whiskey that is super big and powerful in your face. That's not, because because that can impress you too, right? That sort of pow of flavor, you know, that can you know be really quite impressive. It's more of the layers and the textures. There's a silkiness across the palate as well, which is sort of common with Irish whiskeys. And it's the little nuances that you, you have to sort of stop and pay attention to uh, that are really, really impressive. This is an absolutely uh, superb whiskey. By the way, this is also a really, really superb wine. This one here is actually a 2012. Um, I was at the Institute of Masters Wine Bordeaux tasting in 2016, in which we reviewed uh, the 2012 vintage. It's a classic vintage. If you want to know a little bit about wine, if you want to know what bottles to pick up from Chateau Liveau Barton, look for 2009, 2010, uh, 2011, eh, 2012 is classic. 2013, absolutely avoid. It's a really, really bad year. 14s are okay. 15s are phenomenal. 16s are phenomenal. And I haven't tried the 17, but I hear the 17 are, are doing really, really well as well, right? Uh, they should be just now coming out on the market. Now, Chateau Livo Barton, I used to pick them regularly for 60 bucks. Uh, they were the most affordable of all the second growth of Bordeaux. Um... My favorite, actually, right next door, my, my favorite second growth Bordeaux is uh, Du Cru Bu Caillou, but that's 130 up and now closer to $200. This one's now going for like 115, 120 bucks. So it has caught up with some of its neighbors in terms of price, but still an absolutely superb bottle. I know this isn't a wine channel, this isn't a wine review, but I just thought I'd let you know, uh, this is an absolutely uh, superb uh, wine. Now, um, Green Spot, has done a new world counterpart to the Chateau Le Vaubarton, and that is the Chateau Montalena. And a Chateau sounds like it'd be in France, but it's not. Chateau Montalena uh, is in uh, Calistoga, the north end of the Napa Valley. So if you can't get your hands on the Le Vaubarton, if Chateau Montalena is anything like this, the new world counterpart, and I've been to that uh, chateau, been to that winery, really, really high, 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 high end wines. Their, uh, their Chardonnay actually won in the 1976 uh, Jesuit of Paris. So they've always been a real high end quality producer. Um, so if you can't get the Livo Barton, uh, I would say try out the Chateau Montalena. In fact, I might want to pick one up myself to do a side by side comparison of Livo Barton versus Chateau Montalena. But we'll see how that goes. All right. Uh, if you have subscribed to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you're not yet a subscriber, but you like watching my videos, subscribe, give the bell a uh, little ring, uh, so you'll be notified when I go live or post a new video. And if you are one of my uh, Patreons, I want to thank you very much for joining my little group. All right. And until next time, cheers.